Bill Mickelson is a golfer whose wealth and lifestyle have captured the imagination of fans worldwide. Today we'll reveal how this golfing legend made his fortune and how he spends the millions of dollars he owns. Stick around until the end and we'll unveil the grand total that'll leave you amazed. While all that's great, let's now peel back the layers of Phil Mickelson's life and explore a chapter that's rarely discussed, his gambling problems. In the book Gambler, Secrets from a Life at Risk, Billy Walter shares insights into their five-year gambling partnership and provides a glimpse into Phil's high-stakes world. It all began in 2006 at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am, where Billy Walters and Phil Mickelson crossed paths. Despite Phil's struggle on the golf course that day, his brilliance as a player was unmistakable. Billy noticed a shared interest in sports gambling, laying the foundation for a unique partnership. Fast forward to 2008 at the Wachovia Championship, where a more direct Phil approached Billy about partnerships. Phil, having access to places where large bets could be placed, and Billy, with his gambling prowess, entered into a five-year gambling venture. Their matches were not just about money, but were fueled by a shared camaraderie. In the world of sports gambling, trust and risk sharing are paramount. Phil and Billy agreed on a 50-50 split, each putting up half the money. Phil's vast offshore accounts, capable of handling substantial action, made this partnership even more enticing for Billy. Phil Mickelson, at the peak of his financial success, with an estimated worth of $250 million, was no stranger to taking risks. The agreement includes setting up whenever their combined winnings or losses reach $3 million, a sum that seemed inconsequential given Phil's financial stature. The agreement included settling up whenever their combined winnings or losses reached $3 million, a sum that seemed inconsequential given Phil's financial stature. As the partnership evolved, Billy sought to emulate Phil's betting patterns to maintain discretion. Phil's willingness to bet big became evident, with staggering figures such as $20,000 on NBA parlays and bets ranging from $100,000 to $200,000 on various sports. Phil's annual betting activity between 2010 and 2014 paints a picture of a fearless gambler. However, there were moments of caution. Phil's proposition to bet $400,000 on the U.S. team during the Ryder Cup left Billy astonished. A reflection of the risks involved considering Phil's iconic status led Billy to decline the offer. Insights from reliable sources suggested that Phil's gambling losses were not merely $40 million as previously reported but possibly closer to $100 million. Phil's betting habits during those years were astounding, with over 7,000 wagers on football, basketball, and baseball combined. The disclosure of these details has raised eyebrows and opened a window into the world of sports gambling, where fortunes can change with the roll of the dice. Now let's dive into the lavish life of Phil Mickelson, starting with his jaw-dropping $8 million mansion. Imagine a sprawling 9,500 square feet of luxury living space, complete with six bedrooms, nine bathrooms, a fitness gym, library, and a family room that exudes elegance. Oh, and did we mention his personal golf course in the backyard? But hold on, this is just the beginning. Phil is constructing a new house in Florida's Jupiter Island, a haven for golfing legends like Tiger Woods. With its tax advantages and exclusivity, it's no wonder Phil chose this place for his next dream house. And that's not all. Phil Mickelson is not one, but two stunning holiday homes. One, a hacienda-style mansion in Cabo Lucas, Mexico, offering breathtaking ocean views, spacious bedrooms, and a wine cellar. The other, a gorgeous beach house in La Jolla, Southern California, a true haven of luxury. But Phil's not just a real estate mogul. He's a savvy businessman. He owns a share in Discovery Land Company, a high-end golf course and resort developer. Plus, he's a partial owner of Friars Head Golf Club in New York. Talk about diversifying your portfolio. Let's shift gears and take a ride through Phil's exquisite car collection. From an Aston Martin Vanquish to a Bentley Continental GT, he's got a taste for luxury. And who could forget his exclusive custom-made golf cart, one of only four in the world. Phil's interests go beyond the road. He's also a licensed pilot. Although he sold his private jet, the Gulfstream 5, his taste for the extraordinary was evident with gold-plated faucets and opulent interiors. As the saying goes, life is too short to drink bad wine. Phil takes this to heart with a passion for fine wines. His collection includes rare vintages, and he's even turned into a bit of a wine influencer after his on-course celebrations. But it's not just about indulging in the finer things. Phil Mickelson is committed to health and wellness. He co-founded a coffee startup, 
for wellness, producing a unique blend packed with exotic ingredients chosen for their health benefits. But with all of Phil's wealth, here's the heartwarming side, his commitment to giving back. The Phil and Amy Mickelson Foundation, established in 2004, focuses on supporting youth and family initiatives. Phil also founded Birdies for the Brave, raising funds for charities supporting veterans and military families. He's known for generous acts of kindness, tipping generously at lemonade stands and donating substantial amounts to various causes like Jackson State University. With all that wealth, you might think Phil would mainly invest in real estate, right? Even stocks or cryptocurrency would make sense. But guess what Phil actually invests in? In dinosaur skulls and space rocks. Yes, you heard that right. A T-Rex skull and a collection of meteorites, including one gifted by his wife. Phil's recent decision to join Live Golf has sparked quite the controversy. When we look at the payout they're offering and Phil's tendency for gambling and the losses he's made, it all makes sense why he would join despite all the backlash he received. However, still, according to Mickelson, there are two key reasons driving this decision. In his own words, the reason why I'm so high on Live Golf is it addresses two areas that for 30 years I've played the tour. They have tried and struggled. What are these two crucial areas that caught Phil's attention apparently? Let's break it down. Firstly, Phil sees Live Golf as a game changer in bringing professional golf to a global audience. For decades, the traditional golf scene faced challenges in expanding its reach worldwide. According to Phil, Live has a chance to bring professional golf throughout the world. Globally, I think that's going to be a big impact. Imagine golf tournaments reaching every corner of the globe, captivating fans from various cultures and regions. That's the vision Phil sees in Live Golf. But that's not all. There's a second reason that resonates deeply with Phil. He highlights the need to attract a younger audience to the sport. The other thing is, be as a game and sport, the viewership has gone up five years to the average age, I believe of 64. We have to target the younger generation. Phil recognizes the importance of engaging a younger demographic to ensure the future of golf. Live Golf, with its innovative approach, aims to bridge this generational gap and make golf a more appealing to a broader audience. Despite facing backlash and controversies for his move, Phil Mickelson stands by his decision to join the Live Golf series. I think going forward you have to pick a side. You have to pick what side do you think is going to be successful. Phil firmly believes that he's on the winning side of the evolution and shaping of professional golf in the coming years. I see Live Golf trending upwards. I see PGA Tour trending downwards. And I love the side that I'm on. According to Phil, Liv's golf's inclusive and fluid decision-making process stands out creating an environment where players feel heard and involved. It's worth noting that before the Live Golf series began, the PGA Tour took a strong stance announcing the suspension of players who would participate in the rival tournament. However, this didn't deter players from choosing Live Golf over the PGA Tour, and some reports suggest the lore of substantial contracts played a role. The first season of the Live Golf series recently concluded, crowning the team four aces as the champion. The prize money, a staggering $16 million for the winners, reflects the series' commitment to rewarding its participants generously. Despite the controversies and the divide between traditional golf and the evolving live golf, players like Phil Mickelson are betting on the future. So while Phil might claim to have joined Live for the global impact it is bound to have, his gambling problems and the big payouts Live have reveal other obvious motivations as well. Phil Mickelson is one of the richest golfers alive, with an estimated net worth of around $410 million. And it's safe to say that joining Liv will only add to the number. Speaking of net worths, if you want to learn more about the richest golfers alive and their net worth, click the video on screen to find out.